Well, hello everybody and welcome back to G-Bear Homesteading the Desert. The first day of July 2018. That means this is the first day of the second half of the year. The first half is gone bye-bye. And I've got a lot of work to do before this second half ends. Anyway, come over here and I'll show you, as threatened, I threw a couple of pieces of sod in there for the chickens. And uh, they went on it, and they pecked at it a little bit here and there, but uh, they didn't destroy it. I gave them something else to think about. I uh, picked up a four-pack of 16, I think it was 16, or maybe 15-ounce uh, French-cut green beans uh, for a dollar at one of the local markets. And uh, I said, well, let's see. That'd make a nice treat for the chicken. A lot cheaper than buying mealworms and other stuff that they sell for chickens. So I put it out there and oh my God, did they go nuts for it. And you can see some of their um, feed left in the two separate bowls. I have to do the two bowls because one of these hens has taken over as head hen. And when she's eating, she won't let anybody else eat out of the, the bowl that she's eating from. So. I, gave, I separate the two so all the other hens eat out of one side while she's eating out of the other side. And then she gets jealous and she comes over to see what they're all eating about, chases them all away. They go over to the other one and she eats at this one. And then she runs over there to chase them away from her other bowl. It's, it's almost a comedy show. But, uh, I might separate them out a little bit more so that she has a longer way to go between them and that might be a little bit better idea. Water filled up. This was uh, the other half of my uh, original coyote feeder, uh, which is now up the hill that way. Um, right now, I just put that out here with some water in it. And uh, every now and then they walk through it. All right, I did go in town and uh, I did some uh, work, uh, earnings for the earnings. When I got back yesterday, I had, uh, eight eggs in the nest and I just checked a little while ago and I got four more so there's another full dozen and I had a couple this morning and a couple yesterday morning so I'm getting my fill of eggs I'll have another dozen to bring down to somebody I brought a, a dozen when I went down to pick up my stuff that I had to pick up down in the OC and as you can see I got garden hoses running here and now it goes all the way and I got a little extra piled up by the water barrel there. So uh, I can bring water down from up at the cabin area down to here without carrying it in buckets now. Inside the unit, I upgraded all of the trees that were in the little one and five gallon pots up to the larger seven and a half gallon pots and they all look happy about it and uh this royal a apricot here it's just sprouting all over the place so it really likes that extra uh root space that one i did yesterday today i did the bartlett pear um the uh what the heck was that the peach uh no that was the burgundy plum and uh, I, I upgraded this uh, mandarin tangerine into a bigger pot. That one I'm going to leave in that pot for now and let it stay for, uh, keep on going because it's just starting to bloom some flowers. And uh, I don't want to disrupt it while it's doing that. But uh, everything's looking good. Come on over here. Look at my cucumbers. They're, they're taking off fast here now. I got a couple here. Those over there were just some uh, suckers I pulled off of the uh, uh, tomato plants and I didn't have any place to throw them so I just stuck them in the soil right there. If they make, if they root, cool. If they don't, all they do is add a little bit of nitrogen to the soil. All right, this tangerine tree has got a bunch of fresh growth on it and it's got some flowers coming out right there. So. It's liking that bigger pot. Still no cilantro coming up, but I do see a little green thing popping down there. It might be a piece of grass. Potatoes. 
they're coming up fast. Sweet potatoes, they're coming up really fast. I transplanted the tomatoes I got from Bill and the one I got from uh, Vince into larger pots today. Those were the pots I took the small these big trees out of. They're too small, so I, I put those over here for tomatoes, and I put the bigger pots for the trees. And uh, these little tomatoes, they're looking fairly healthy. I think they're going to make it, but uh, they're not really liking this extreme dry heat. So I, uh, I got to get a spritzer or a, a Hudson sprayer that I can um, put some uh, nutrients on the leaves to keep them from curling. My peppers are coming up great. These are um, suckers I pulled off of one of these fruit trees. And look at that. I've got fresh growth on there. Right there and right there and right there. So those may root and I'll get a couple of new trees out of those. Even if they don't uh, produce a good fruit, they'll produce shade. And that's a good thing. So I can set those around the border of this place and when my tarps tear up, I'll still have sh uh, shade from the trees. Corn is looking healthy on this end because it doesn't get all the sun. Over there, it's taking a beating from the sun. So it's just too hot. This one just dried up and went to Valhalla. It's done. Pepper plants, they like the heat, so it's doing okay. Have a couple of other large pots here that left over from uh, the transplants I did today. And I've got my steer manure here. I got four bags that's ready to go into the, uh, um, the, the grow buckets that I'm going to do on the self-watering garden. And I have three bags of uh, my garden soil left. So my next step will be to work on the uh, self-watering garden and get that ready. And I'll get some of the uh, late season plants in there. I can still put tomatoes in. There's plenty of time to grow tomatoes. So I might do... Uh, uh, three or four more tomato plants in here while I was down my friend Vince uh, Said that he was gonna sprout some more suckers off of some of his uh, plants and he's got some uh, Heirloom tomatoes down there that look really good. So I might take a few of those up here and and stick them in and uh, get those going and uh, that's about it on the vegetables, so I just glanced past them, but uh, yeah, I'm about ready to harvest some uh, sunions here. And the carrots are doing great. And um, these potatoes, I, I took all the dried um, leaves off of it. And I still have some fresh growth down there. And I stuck my hand down in the soil and I pulled up some nice little uh, uh, new potatoes. Uh, the, the little golden ones. About, uh, about the size of a golf ball. So those would be great for my beef stew, um, which I'm probably going to do tomorrow night. I don't know if I'm going to dig some of those out or I'll just leave them in there until I'm ready to dump the whole bucket and uh, sort through them. Because I got three different potatoes planted in that one bucket. Next time I do that, I'm going to do it like I did over here in larger buckets like this so that I get a really good crop that I can store for a while and can a few for the winter. And... Uh, keep things going all right that's about all there is to it oh yeah out here you see all the the dirt and the tracks and uh, the plowing I took uh, that big bush that was right here out and that bush that was right here that kept scratching me every time I tried to get water out of the barrels that had to go I took the two of them out of here and you can see my tire tracks here where I backed my van down to unload as uh, those uh, three cubic foot of uh, garden soil there are damp as can be. They got a lot of water in them and they're heavy. So I've got them up close where I didn't have to carry them too far and loaded them in here. Uh, I think tomorrow I'm gonna go get the uh, drip irrigation lines from the old orchard. They'll connect here and go in and then run across all of these trees here. And then when I get a chance, I'll order my automatic valve so that uh, the thing turns on and by itself. And that saves me the trouble I have to come out here and water everything. It'll, uh, 
It'll do all the watering for me. That's real nice. All right. That's all there is to it down here. The one thing I didn't mention, and I'll bring it up now, is that uh, at about 5.45 this morning, I learned for sure that my electric fence protection for my hens is working. It's guaranteed that that setup I have on there works exactly as it's supposed to. Because what woke me up was some dog, dogs yelping. And it was a sound you get when a dog has an electric training collar on and gets jolted and they go, Rrr! you know, that loud shriek. So I got up and I came out on the front porch and there were three dogs out here. Just domestic dogs. Uh, I think somebody released them here in the desert. But uh, you can see all the, the footprints down here. They go all the way around the cage. And they were trying to get into the chicken cage. And my hens are usually out at that time because the sun is already up. But the, the three dogs were, two of them were here, one went around that side. And every time they hit that wire, they, they'd yelp and jump back. So guaranteed that works. I came out and I yelled, hey, get away from here and they all ran up that way through the desert so I think that uh, one of the ladies I met uh, there's some more dog prints over here one of the ladies I met earlier had told me that there was a guy up that living up on the mountain up there that had about uh, 12 or 15 dogs and he was planning on moving back to Mexico so he was going to release all his dogs in the desert and, uh, well, I didn't see 12 to 15, but three of them came through here. So I hope that if she's watching this, uh, she'll come by and uh, let me know if uh, that's the, what happened there. So I can contact the proper authorities to maybe come out here and uh, pick up some dogs. Uh, because they're not going to live out here very long. Uh, there's uh, no food and no water in this part of the desert for them. And... All my stuff is all locked up so they can't get into it. And uh, I hate to see some dogs just die out here from uh, starvation and heat. Anyway, that's it. For leaving on a sad note, G-Bear, signing off.